All right, here's our hypothesis testing for one main worksheet. We have four basic steps. Formulate your hypotheses that I've called H. Pick and set up your appropriate model that I've called M. Perform your calculations for our sample data that I've called C. And then finally, D slash C, make your decision and come up with your conclusion. So let's just highlight a few major important points. When we have one mean, we have to remember that our parameter symbol is the symbol mu. And mu is going to have to show up in each hypothesis. The null, what we currently believe or what we currently accept, and the alternative, what we think might be happening. So in our null, what we currently believe will have some kind of number that we believe that it's equal to. And the alternative, we're going to think it's either greater than that number, or maybe less than that number, or possibly not equal to that number. Okay? Now again, since we are doing means, we're going to have our sampling distribution of means is going to be our model. And remember, that's our unimodal symmetrical shape, the center of our model, the center of our means is going to be the original population mean, and the spread of our means is going to follow that formula sigma over root n. And we're going to have to set up our model with the reject and fail to reject H0 areas based on our desired alpha level, our significance level, or our confidence level if that's how somebody's written it. We'll then move on to our calculation for Z calculated. And remember, that's going to be for our sample data. And again, remember for means, Z calculated is going to equal to our point of interest, X bar minus our center, mu, divided by our spread, sigma over root N. Okay, and we have some p-values that we're going to have to also calculate, and depending on the type of test we're doing, the p-value will have a different definition. And as we go through the different examples, you see how these definitions arise. And then to finish our methodology, we have our decision and conclusion. And remember, we have our two methods, our critical value method, and our second one, our p-value method. And then we have to formulate our overall conclusion. And I've given a template here to help us phrase it, um, you know, because again, just like confidence interval statements, uh, hypothesis testing conclusions can be a little sort of weird to set up after uh, if we've never done it before. So the best thing to do is take a look at an example. So here I have an example for a parking manager at a sports facility. And if you think of something like the dome up in Toronto, I know it's not called the dome anymore, but I forget what it is called, Bell Center maybe? Okay, where they play the baseball anyways. Um, traffic getting in and out of that facility is, is pretty difficult. So very often these different facilities will work with the city to you know, change the traffic flow around it so that during peak times when they, people want to show up for an event or they have to leave an event that you know the flow of the traffic is pretty good. So in this particular case a manager for this particular facility he studied the exit times for cars leaving the facility because usually that's when people get upset right it takes an hour to leave something you're not very happy. So he thought that after recent changes to traffic flow that the actual exit times increased okay and we have here that prior to the changes, so here prior to the changes, the previous exit time was 36 minutes and they knew the population standard deviation was 11. So we want to test the manager's belief. He studied a simple random sample of 200 vehicles and he calculated a sample mean exit time of 36.8 minutes. So here we want to use an alpha or a level of significance of 5% is the manager's belief true. So if we're wondering how we know this is a hypothesis test, usually we're looking for some type of statement like this, okay? Is the manager's belief true, okay? That's usually an indicator that we have a hypothesis test. Once we have that, we want to figure out well, what kind of random variable we have. And in this particular case, we do have it mentioned a number of times. We have a mean. So we know that we have means that we're studying. So we need to look for our summary information, what's our population information that's generally accepted now, and what's our sample information. So let's put over here, 
I'm just going to put pop for population information and sample for sample information. Okay, so we're going to need a mu, we're going to need a sigma, we're going to need an n, and we're going to need an x bar. And if we walk through the question again, and again I'll try and highlight this, let's take a look for the current population information. So what we have here, prior to changes, the previous mean exit time was 36, and the population standard deviation was 11. So here we can have 36 and 11. And then if we're looking for our sample information, let's put that in maybe uh, pink here. Here we have a simple random sample of 200 and the sample mean of 36.8. So we can sum summarize that here. So 30, 6.8 and here oops sorry that should be uh let's see erase that oops let's erase let's redo this so our n is 200 and our sample is 36.8 our sample mean so to formulate our null hypothesis, what is existing, what is currently accepted, is that the mean exit times mu is 36. And what does the manager believe? So let's take a look at that again. So he believes that recent changes have increased average exit times. So here we're going to have mu is greater than 36. So now we have formulated, we've deconstructed our question and we formulated our null and alternative hypotheses. Now we need to go on to the actual model. So we're going to have to put our sampling distribution of means. So we're going to have our x bars is what we're plotting. Our central value is 36. And what we're going to have to do is set up, well, where's our, what kind of test are we doing? We're doing a greater than test. So notice here, a greater than test. So we're going to have some type of little bar here. And that's going to represent our Z critical. And this will represent our alpha. And remember our alpha, if we go back to the question, alpha of 5%. Okay, and then this is going to be our reject H naught region. And over here is going to be the fail to reject. I'm just going to go F fail to reject H naught, okay, just so that my rating doesn't continue to deteriorate. Now something else we're going to have to sort out is what is this Z critical going to be equal to. So remember, if we go back to our Z tables, here we have area to the right is equal to 0 0.05 with our alpha of 05. And that implies area to the left is equal to 0.95. And if we look up the Z tables, it implies Z is equal to, we look that up and we can see 1.645. So now we have our Z critical. And what we can realize is that if our calculated Z statistic falls in this region here, then we'll reject H naught. If it falls over here, then we're going to fail to reject H naught. So let's move on now to our calculations. So remember we have our Z calculated. And that's equal to X bar minus mu divided by sigma over root N. So let's put in the numbers there. My X bar is 36.8. That's my sample value. My mu is just the 36. 
and we have to divide that by sigma was 11 and our n was 200. And remember, this number in the bottom has to be put in brackets. And when we calculate that, we get this value for our z, 1.0285. And to two decimal places, 1.03. So now we have our z calculated. We're also going to want our p value, though. So remember that the p value in a greater than test is equal to the area to the right of z calculated. So I'm going to have to go back to my tables again. And when z is equal to 1.03, it implies the area to the left is equal to 0.8485, which of course implies area to the right is 1 minus that. And we get 0.1515. Okay, all right. Now for our decision and our conclusion, let's do the critical value approach first. So this we need our Z calculated. And we got Z calculated as 1.03. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna locate Z calculated. And I'm gonna pick a different color. Let's pick a purple one here. And Z calculated of 1.03 is going to show up. So right here, there, 1.03. Well, that's not in this region here. It's going to be somewhere around here. 1.03 Z calculated. So we can clearly see that that's in the fail to reject region. So fail to reject H naught, okay? Now if we go to our p-value approach, we had our p-value and we got 0.1515. And remember, oops, um, this is put H naught there. Sorry, I just want to clean this up a little bit here. All right, remember the rule is if p value is less than alpha value, it implies reject H naught. So again, I'm just gonna go to purple here. For our p value, we got 0.1515. And our alpha value was 05. And we can clearly see that this is greater than our alpha value. So that's going to imply fail to reject H naught. And notice how both methods have the same results. Now, it's going to be a little difficult. I can't really write on the screen here what the conclusion is, so I'm just going to say it out. So our conclusion would, statement would be, at the 5% level of significance, there is not enough evidence to reject H naught. It appears that the manager's belief that the exit times have increased is not true, okay? So he thought that the exit times had increased and we're showing from the analysis that it doesn't look like they have. So hopefully that's helped you with at least one working through uh, question for the uh, null hypothesis for testing of one mean. I'll try and do another video in a little bit of time. Thanks.